want. That's why you're supposed to be sure that you need this antibiotic before taking, before it. taking it. And that's how you know how long you need. You're going to need it. So you don't take uh, 10 days antibiotic for something you needed just 3 days. Mm. Or you don't take 3 days for something you needed yeah, 1 month. Days. Yes, sure. Yes. Okay, so are there things that... There are there things that should be avoided when taking antibiotics? Maybe food. Are there type of are there foods that should, because I have personally heard of one, but I do not know how true that is. That's okay. why I have you here okay. to clear the air. But um, are there foods that should not be taken, or foods that should be encouraged when one is on antibiotics? Okay, antibiotics do well with food. Mm. Okay, almost every kind of food. Okay. But there are antibiotics you need to take without food. Oh, okay. Yes, and then drugs like ciprofloxacin should be um, milk should be avoided when taking drugs like ciprofloxacin. Okay. Yeah, so why milk is that? interferes with the process of ciprofloxacin working. It's oh. a technical term. Okay. But um, milk makes your ciprofloxacin less active. Let's put it I that see. way. So you need to avoid milk when yes. taking ciprofloxacin, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then there are some other drugs, azithromycin. You could suppose to take azithromycin on empty stomach. That's without food. Okay. Then you should also avoid drugs called antacids. You know, the drugs that you use when you have heartburn, yes, yes, when yes. you're having indigestion, when you're taking your antibiotics, and even almost every other drug. Yeah, yeah, but if 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 they shouldn't be taken, that what happens to those who are also patients who need this? So you give three hours. I usually recommend three hours to be sure that your system has been cleared. In between, yeah. These two As you mean, you need to take your breakfast before your superfluxacin. I recommend three hours after your breakfast. Before we are sure that the milk has been digested mm. and everything has been cleared. If you need to take your antacid before your ulcer drug, I also recommend three hours. We are certain everything has been cleared. Mm -hmm. The antacid is no longer as active. You know, so that way you can take your drugs and still get what you need from it. Yes. So these are the things you're supposed to really avoid when taking ordinary antibiotics do well. Yes. We, because we have the antibiotics, they take six, six hours. Okay. Sometimes you find yourself taking it in the middle of the night, so you may not even eat. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So antibiotics do very well on their own. Mm. They don't have so much, but for ciprofloxacin, you need to avoid milk. Ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, any of the fluoroquinolones family, you're supposed to avoid milk when taking them. That's major, that's standard. Okay, so just milk? Yes, just milk. Okay, so um, are there any side effects? I know like the body system differs yeah. and what uh, I might react to, you might not react to, but are there like certain side effects that you would need to ask uh, patients before you recommend or prescribe um, these antibiotics? Are there, you know? Side effects they might feel when taking the drugs. Yes. yes, a lot. A lot of people feel nauseous. Oh, okay. Yeah, they don't do it with certain drugs. A lot of people come down with constipation. They are the ones who come down. Yeah, they come down with diarrhea. Oh, okay. But they are not really life threatening. Except you are reacting to, like, a drug, cotrimazole. If you take cotrimazole, you may react. If you have. If you react to it, you may oh. come down with severe drug reaction called Steven Johnson syndrome. You get, you know, it's really not nice. Yeah. So you need to be sure you are not reacting to a drug. That's why when patients come, we ask them, I do. Have you taken this drug before? Mm. I like to always ask. Yes. Because if they have and they had an effect sometimes, you can't give, it. give them again. Again. So, but ordinarily, they are well tolerated. Oh, okay. Well Just mild, you know, side effect, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, in case of other drugs. Yeah. But ordinarily, they are mildly tolerated. Okay. Well, it's good. We've covered um, what antibiotics are and what they are cl clinically used for and all this. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to pick up from um, the... Uh, we're going to pick up from our actual topic, which is the um, abuse of antibiotics. Please don't touch it. I'll be right back. Antibiotics are chemical compounds that kill or inhibit the growth of bacteria. They do this in a variety of different ways. Penicillin works by breaking down bacterial cell walls, killing bacteria and preventing further growth. Imagine it like popping a party balloon. 
Since the discovery of penicillin, many other antibiotics have been found and modified to make them more effective, as well as ever increasingly safe for human use. Different antibiotics work in different ways to kill or stop the growth of bacteria. Antibiotics like erythromycin and neomycin work by stopping protein synthesis inside the bacterial cells. By binding to specific RNA and other internal structures, these antibiotics stop the process of protein synthesis, which is a basic need for all living organisms to survive. Antibiotics like ciprofloxacin, on the other hand, bind to DNA enzymes, inhibiting DNA replication, which stops cell mitosis so the bacteria cannot divide and grow. However, in some cases, bacteria can become resistant to certain antibiotics. This happens because of natural selection. Some bacteria can contain DNA, which allows them to make enzymes capable of breaking down antibiotics. <laughs> These bacteria will survive such pressures, allowing them to proliferate and share their DNA with other bacteria, effectively giving them the same ability. Viruses are naturally immune to all antibiotics. This is because they do not perform the biological processes that bacteria do in order to survive. They also don't have cell walls. To make it easier and slightly more fun, imagine we give your mother-in-law a sledgehammer. We've also taken your car. Sorry about that. Luckily for you, we give you a tranquilizer dart. You should find it quite easy to prevent any damage being done to your car. However, the second time round, we remote control a small drone to fly into your car through its sunroof, then have it connect via Bluetooth to transfer software to disable your car's brakes. A little harder to stop with a small tranquilizer dart, don't you agree? A virus isn't a living organism, and will only do damage to a cell once inside, whereas a bacteria will do damage to a cell from the outside and can be killed, or at least in your mother-in-law's case, put to sleep for a little while. Antibiotic resistance in bacteria is becoming one of society's greatest and most frightening problems, facing us with a huge challenge over the coming decades. Many antibiotics are found in nature, but as we continue to destroy our natural surroundings, such as the rainforests and marine environments, where else do we look? If you're just joining us, this is Health Matters and Liberty, and our topic, we're taking the abuse of antibiotics, we're moving in proper and our guest is pharmacist constant so moving on pharmacist what do you mean when you say abuse of antibiotics this is a very tricky question considering you said um it depends on the use depends on how much your body needs it so what do you mean what do we mean what do you mean when we say abuse of antibiotics okay if i want to define abuse now i'm going to give examples just so you understand what I really mean. Yes, okay. and how it can be abused of course. Yeah. We okay let me give an example of a drug you're supposed to take three times daily for five days. Mm -hmm. We have people who decide that they are going to take it twice daily. Instead of instead of three times. And then because the drugs may be really potent for them, after two days they feel well and then they decide to stop. That's a misuse of the antibiotic. That's an abuse of the antibiotic. Now misuse is when you use it for a wrong reason. Mm. You're having a viral infection uh, and you're using an antibiotic. antibiotic. You're having a fungal infection and you're using an antibiotic. There are times when these infections co cohabit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's fungal present, there's bacteria present, fine. But on your own, you should need a professional to tell you, are you to combine both drugs? Mm -hmm. You don't on your own have a little, you know, fungal reaction and you decide to take an antibiotic for it on your own. So that's misuse. Yeah. When you use antibiotics for the wrong reasons. Abuse is really what you see around. Yes. People taking drugs not the way being prescribed for them. Mm -hmm. You have the drugs taken once daily and someone says, ah, this is not so small. How will I take only this drug once daily? Yes. I see it a lot. Is it really going to work? You know, and so because of the doubt they have, they go and take it twice yes. or three times. You know, and then you see someone say, ah, how would I be taking a drug every six hours? I can't wake up. I'll and the person, you thank you, the person decides on their own yes. to take it two in the morning, two in the evening. evening. And then he says, no, I don't need so much now. Just one, one subject should be okay for me. I mean, after two doses, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that's abuse. Yes. So, and it's, it's really rampant because a lot of people don't see the effects immediately. It's a long-term long thing. Yeah. 
So the effects of this misuse and abuse is, is a long term thing. You don't yes. see it immediately. You may have, you know, followed that lifestyle for three, four years and it's working and you feel yes. that's the best way to go about it. On a certain day, it won't work. Sure. You know, so that's really what. So, what would you say are the harmful effects of antibiotics? Mm, well, aside the major side effects and adverse drug reactions, you can. No, get. I'm not talking of the side effects. Yes. I'm talking of. Okay, let me rephrase that question. What happens when one misuses antibiotics? Okay, the the major thing you get is resistance. Your body just that, yes it's not your body that resists now it's the bacteria resisting the drug okay. that's why you see people say i've been taking this drug it's since but it's no longer working what it means is the bacteria is now so used to this drug yes so it doesn't affect it anymore in the presence of this drug the bacteria is still growing yes. and multiplying Okay, because what it's doesn't not it, to your body yes, you know what, what doesn't happened. kill you makes you stronger. Makes you stronger. So the bacteria did not die because you didn't take it the way you were supposed to take mm -hmm. it. You took it for two days instead of five days. Yes. You just reduced twenty percent of the bacterial load you had. Mm -hmm. So the remaining eighty percent grows up. They okay. grow and they are now used to this. They've used the, the, the antibiotic they didn't take, they, that didn't kill them, and they've used it to grow. Mm. I don't know if you understand. understand. They are now used to it. So when next you come, it's, it's like a normal thing for them. I tell people it's like you're giving them vitamin C to drink. They don't see it as a drug anymore. Yes, sure. It's now part of like water. They see this drug and they are still growing, they are still living well, even in the presence of this drug. That's resistance. And it's really bad because there are certain times that people will be sick and you will need this and you will need these drugs and you find out that you've given them this they are not okay you've given them that they are not okay you've given them a lot of things they are not okay then they decide to go for a lab test and you find out they are resisting a lot of drugs already because, because in the misused. past yes they've misused they've abused if people just take antibiotics okay, we have this one that always makes me wonder where they get the knowledge from people come and say they treat they take antibiotics to flush their system every three months every three months yes it's something they've been practicing i've seen it a lot and i'm always surprised what do you mean flushing your system <laughs> What do you mean flushing your system? There are no preventive doses of antibiotics. There are no preventive doses. Sure. You have to be sick, then you treat. You can't take an antibiotic that you're preventing something that may not even happen. Mm -hmm. So you, after every three months, you come and take antibiotics to flush your system. So that's not your body needed. It. That's not what your body needs at that time. Okay, there's even nothing like flushing your system. You're killing bacteria. That's what antibiotics is for, to kill bacteria, not to necessarily, if you want to detoxify, because I believe that's what they mean that's by what flushing they mean their by flushing. system. Yeah, if you want to detoxify, then you detoxify. There are a lot of other things you can use for detoxification, for detoxification. but as for treating infections, you need antibiotics. So you have to have the infection before you take antibiotics, okay? Then imagine someone resisting almost all the classes of antibiotics that your body needs at some point. And then everyone is running around trying to see how to help the situation. Mm. But it's late. You are resisting the basics. You are resisting ampiclos, amoxil, and a lot. What do we do for you at that point? Then you start to remember back when you used to take two ampicloths just to flush your system and now it's late. That's why I said the effects are not seen immediately. Mm. They are not seen immediately. It's with time. A lot of other people it's in their old age when they are really sickly. Yes. And at that point you're giving them everything, everything that would normally work. But at that point it's no longer working. So this is the major harmful effects of oh. antibiotic misuse and abuse resistance. It's, it's a, it's in fact, it's a prevailing factor. Because of that, a lot of antibiotics are no longer so potent mm. because the resistance has been, you know, sure. and it's, it spreads. 
So, um, put yourself in some people's shoes. I don't know, it might not even make any sense to you, but why do you think it's easy for people to misuse antibiotics? Uh, it's easy for people to misuse antibiotics because over here in our country, you get antibiotics over the counter. Without prescriptions. Without prescriptions. So, and even when you counsel a patient and say, take this this way, you're not living with the person. So the person decides the way he or she wants to take it. But it's largely due to ignorance. Because I believe if you really know and understand yes. the effect of what you're doing, you, you won't, won't do, do it. it. So you're trying to even tell them and they feel there's nothing that they've been doing it Absolutely. or their mother have been doing it or their grandmother. So I believe it's because they, don't, they lack the knowledge. They don't see the way we see it yes. and they don't believe it the way we explain to them. It's, like, ah, it's not that serious. It's actually that serious. It is. It's actually that serious. So I believe if they know what the effect will be, they won't do it. I mean, it's just five days. You cannot take your drugs for five days. You can take your drugs for five days, but they feel once two days they are okay, then there is no need. Then we have people who come and say, taking drugs for that long is an overdosage. And I'm saying it's not overdose because this is prescribed within this certain period of time. You need it for five days. It's not an overdose. Oh. It becomes an overdose if you needed it for five days. And, and you take it for more than? For more than five days. Within five days, it's not overdose. Oh. So you feeling well doesn't necessarily mean 100% of the bacteria has been cleared. Okay? Sure. 20 has been cleared, 30 has been cleared, 40, 50, but not 100%. The reason why you're taking for that long is to clear everything from your body. Sure. Okay? So you clear from the liver, clear the ones that have entered every other place, you clear, 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 clear. That's why you need the five days. Ordinarily, yes, if you're responding fine to an antibiotic, you oh. feel relief on second day, if not first day. Yes. You feel relief. But it hasn't cleared. So the reason you're taking it for up to five days is to make sure you've killed not not just to make because you can you can make um a bacteria static uh -huh. okay you can make a bacteria static yes. but you haven't killed it that brings me to saying the antibacteria that are bacteriostatic and bactericida uh -huh. they are the ones that are supposed to kill most of the ones we are the ones that are supposed to kill because we want it dead we want yes. it gone yes so if you are supposed to take for five days it means we want it gone we want it dead. We just don't want it to be immo immobile at that time. In day two, day three, they are just immobile. They are getting weak. Okay? Sure. Day four, day five, they are totally cleared. So well, if people know these things, if they believe, like, if, they, if we tell them and they agree to listen, I believe they will be able to take the drugs better. Yes, plus I think our attitude, the attitude we have here sometimes about knowing it all. Mm. You just feel like, okay, I have this, I, you know what antibiotics yes. would do? Uh, I wish they would just go to the counter and say to the pharmacist, you know what, this is what is wrong with me. And then you get pres like professional help. I, I had an encounter last week. A patient came in and he had swelling on his hand. I looked at it and it wasn't much, so I gave him an anti-inflammatory analgesic painkiller mm -hmm. and he went and came back and said, is that all I was going to give to him? Do I mean I'm not going to give him an antibiotic? antibiotic. I said, what, what's wrong? Why do you need an antibiotic? I said, he doesn't know, but he feels this one tablet I gave him is too small that the way it's well i said go and try this and come back let's see he came back a few days later and he was all smiles and i said when i was trying to explain to you you didn't Left believe to me. him he, yes. would have just got he didn't believe it my joy was he didn't go somewhere else yes true to just go and buy true. because he came to me to complain because he could have easily gone yes back. he wasn't convinced he could have easily gone somewhere else and now requested for the antibiotic mm. but somehow he didn't after about three days he came back and he was all okay so if we decide to listen to our health practitioners okay and believe them have faith in them we may not necessarily have the much resistance like we have sure. this period okay so how can this situation be avoided especially on your path. When I say you, I'm generalizing the whole health <laughs> practitioners. How can this be avoided? Okay. 
if when I do, if someone comes to my place to request for a medication, mm -hmm. I don't just dispense. I try to find out what are you taking this for. Mm -hmm. We have people who already know the names of drugs. Yes. yes. We have people who Google names of drugs. Okay, they just type in their symptoms and then come up with one drug and they come and say, give me this. Sure. I try to ask them, what are you using this for? Then I can guide them better. Yeah. It may not even necessarily be this one you want. It may be another one. It may not be an antibiotic you need. It may be something else. It might not be as serious as you think. It might not be as Honestly, mild as you think. Honestly, people use antibiotics to treat malaria in Nigeria. Best believe that. Someone is having, he says, I know it's malaria, just give me antibiotics. And I'm like, if it's malaria, then you have anti-malaria, it's not antibiotics. And they say, that's what I've been using. So when people come to the pharmacy, I try to find out what exactly is the problem. Yes. So when, you know, we talk about it, I know how best to guide it. So for other health practitioners, I would recommend, if someone comes into your place and, re and requests for an antibiotic, it's always good you know what the person is taking it for. Yes. The way you, you go for that, give some kind of counseling, education. Let them know what the drug they are taking is used for. Let them know how to take it. Let them know the side effects they may come down with. Uh -huh. Let them know what to expect while taking the drugs. Okay? You have people take drugs and they come back and say their stool is black and all that. They should know beforehand that it has an effect of the drug. Okay, so if people come to your place, you should be able to go an extra mile to educate them. Let them know the importance of finishing their regimen, completing their medication, yes. finishing the dosage. Let people know that you don't just discard drugs anyhow. That's another very important factor. People discard drugs the wrong way. People have drugs they just keep in their houses. The last time they took it, they didn't finish up. So the next time they feel they up, they a little, yes, they feel a little sick, not even necessarily sick, just a little. They remember the last time they took one of these drugs and they felt well, they'll go back and take one again. You know, so people should know how best to discard drugs. Yeah. You don't just throw drugs around, you know. So health professionals should be able to just go the extra mile. Patient education and counseling is always very important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be in a hurry, but just keep in one or two things, yeah. especially on the importance of adhering to your dose regimen. It's really, really important. Yes. Well, on this topic, my personal advice is to avoid it, of course, so your body doesn't start resisting these treatments. Well, thank you so much, Francis Constance, for joining thank us you. today. Thank it's you. been a pleasure having you. Thank you. I'm glad. We've come to the end of today's edition of Health Matters. Please join us same time next week for another. I still remain your host, Amina Amaza. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>